Lego. I 
Bless you, bless you, shalom, shalom, God bless. I am Prophetess TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver. And we are throwing out this amazing lifeline right now. If you are joining us, we're super excited because we are now in our fifth week of Women of Noble Character, training women to be the women God called them to be. The Bible tells us it's the older women that are trained the younger women. So we've been coming and educating and, and contending with and teaching and training and imparting all of our leadership and abilities and the motherly skills and the cleanly skills, the things that God made us as women, the discernment, when to speak, when not to speak, what to do, all these great things. Remember that women of noble character are not born. They are taught and caught. So usually you get connected with another woman. If you're a good cook, you learn from somebody else how to cook first. If you're good, if you're great at baking, you learn from somebody else how to bake. If you're a good cleaner, somebody else came and showed you how to organize and how to make things nice and pretty. If you are that person that has the ability to encourage you, somebody else must have encouraged you. Everything is imparted from someone else. That is why I've loved my speakers that we've had. We've had Reverend Deborah Manns that was able to tell you what it was like coming from a 
background where her boyfriend tried to turn her into into uh, 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 sex trafficking and prostitution. She turned around and made that a profession when God brought her out and she didn't end up having to go that route, thank God. But God brought her out and she was able to talk to you about you know what it's like to be, have life after divorce, what it's like to have children and have your dreams and things fall apart even after you had all the money, all the things you wanted, everything, and then build back from purpose and strip herself of everything to be who God called her to be. You also had um, Kim, uh, Pastor Kim McGrew. Oh my goodness, she's such a coach. And she talked to us about our mental stability and having a sharp mind and how to get to that place where you are an, a winner and begin to think like a winner, act like a winner, talk like a winner, walk like a winner. And that's one of the things that I loved about her for sure. We also had, wait, I'm missing. Um, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, who? No, we had quite a few. No, 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 I'm missing. We had others. Help me, help me, help me. Who else do we have? Tell me, share me. Miss Peggy. Miss Peggy, yes, thank you so much. Keep me on point, keep me on point. Drop it in the box. Uh, Miss Peggy came on and she talked to us uh, uh, definitely about our finances and what that meant to be a fi to financially sound and what it meant to actually wait on God, what it meant to actually plan and prepare your life and get things in order and decently in order. She was able to talk to us from that aspect and it's been super amazing to hear her story, to hear what she would God has done in her life. Uh, I've been giving you lots of my skills and things that God has imparted for me, but literally the women have really been helping us to be amazing women. We're going to be what God needs us to be. We know how to be the helpmate. We know how to be the friend. We know when to be and what to be. And that's what God is doing. He's really giving us knowledge and wisdom and understanding about who we are. And I see confidence growing with all of you guys. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Today, we have an amazing um, mama and she is uh, on my ministry team. My mama, mama, oh, mama Minnie is just amazing. She, um, not only she pulls her family, she cares about them so much. She cares about others. She's an educator. She's smart. She's witty. She's amazing. She's discerning. And I love her so much. I'm so glad to have her because there's always a place and a position for you in ministry. And there is always something that you should be doing. And I want to actually get her to want, come on more and help us. So I said, I'm going to have my mama Minnie talk and have you guys come in and listen get to speak with her and talk with her real quickly let's do a quick um before i introduce mama Minnie, i want you to take two do two things tell me where you're calling from and then also i want you to take a second screenshot me or video me and share on your social media and invite a couple people in and give them the zoom so that they can come in okay so invite share real quickly let me see while i'm getting where you're calling from downtown la ventura atlanta <clears throat> tish seattle um new york let me see georgia nevada ontario albany new york god bless you um <clears throat> let me make sure i can hear you guys too say can someone say something to me i want to see if the speaker is picking up Yes, Wait. Mama. Yes, good. we can hear you. <laughs> I want to make sure it's working. Okay, good, 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 good. Houston, Texas, Eastville, uh, Washington State, Giovanna, the Bronx, boogie down right now, Florida. Uh, there's, let me see, where's my YouTube people too? There's a few of you guys from YouTube on here. Chicago is on, Jamaica is on. Um, Oh yeah, hi Dion from Jamaica. Hello Chicago, welcome you to, and who else is on there? Anyone, Sacramento, Desiree's in Sacramento, and anybody on Instagram, um, uh, bless you, bless you, and God bless you. Galaxy S8, I'm not sure where you're calling from, but God bless you too. I see you with the little boy, bless you. I don't know, where are you calling from? Oh, we're Houston, Texas. Auntie Minnie, Minnie Ward's niece and nephew. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you. We're glad to have you. So let me Thank know, you. guys, I shared. And, and also, Jason's on. I love that we have some of the men on because they want to know what they're getting themselves into, okay? They want to know that you invested because they're over there getting themselves together. They want to know that you're getting yourself together because we need to have assets and not liabilities. We need to have help. They need helpmates. If you're a wife, you are the first thing you're supposed to be is a helpmate. Help me. Somebody needs to type help me. 
He cannot do it on, on his own. He's not the engine, engine number nine. He needs a woman of God to help him to relieve the sweat off of his brow, to carry that vision. Yes, he wants to build Walmart. So he built his first Walmart, but when he gets you, he should be able to take it international. He should be able to expand. He should be able to have a lot more going for him because you are in his life. You are there to birth his vision out and to birth your own vision out. And one of the things that I love is that you guys are finding purpose. Remember, it's difficult to get with somebody in a relationship and you don't know your own purpose. You gotta know what God calls you to do, what your gifts and your callings and your talents are. And so nowadays I love it because you can be a stay at home mom and you can still make $100,000 a year on the internet. Ah. You can train people about cooking. You can train people about right now homeschooling you can train people about anything they will click on your information if you're anointed to do it so we're going to find out what we're called to do we can be do trading huh jason you can do trading online and teach people how to do trading and and you can teach people how to teach i, I need to know how to teach right now so i, I hired somebody because i couldn't do it okay i was like i got too much stuff going on all right so mama minnie at the age uh let's see she is the second of seven children her father and her mother from Mississippi, her mother, sister, and herself moved to uh, New Mexico when she was two years old, where she was, a, they were the only black family in town. She was the first black uh, student to attend and graduate from high school there. And they received a, a, a congratulatory telegram from the governor of New Mexico. Uh, she moved to California to attend nursing school with a two-year-old boy that she had given up guardianship over at the age of two and later adopted as a single parent at the age of 21. She got a job during the um, trails, tra uh, Trailways Bus Company where she met and married her husband. She worked there for 14 years and married for 14 years, became a divorced single mother, and she got a job in 19, 1986 with LAUSD as an educator in special education for the last 30, year, 30 years before retiring. And she's been a part of Women in Noble Character as well as Lifeline, and her family's been here. They've been supportive and helpful. Andrea. Uh, let me see, is, is related to her as well as Jasmine. Where's my Jazzy? Uh, where's my Jasmine on? I need to, she might be at work. Jasmine is related to her. Uh, Tawana is her daughter who's brought up there. Yeah, Mama. I see her. I see you. I was going to say, where is she at? And where's Tawana? Do I see Tawana? Oh, there's Tawana over there. Hey there. Look at all pretty. There's Tawana. Andrea, where's Dre? Dre? Let me see your face. Show, show I'm, your face. I'm here, Mama. I can't show my face right now. Oh, oh yeah. But I'm here. Getting there, okay. <laughs> so family is here in support and full, full fledged. We love you so much, Mama Minnie. We want to release you to go ahead and speak what God has given you. If you are on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, please come in. We're gonna put the Zoom link because we'll cut off for anybody who wants to join in. Please come on YouTube or come into the Zoom room, and and we're here. Okay. Have a great one. Go ahead, Mama. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. First, giving honor to God for allowing me to be able to speak to you and giving me the words to say to you today. And I pray that it might touch your heart and it might give you the opportunity to become a Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs 31, 20 says she opens her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her filled hands to the needy, whether in body, mind, or spirit. So I just want to give you a little history about myself. I um, came to California to have a better life for myself. And I wanted to be able to give back to children like I never had. I wanted to show love and help children to become proud of themselves. And I was a young girl. My father was very abusive to us. So we really didn't have a chance to go to church like we wanted to, but we went to church to get away from home to be away with, from my father. The church that we attended was Presbyterian and we were the only black children that was in that church. And they, we had, uh, guy that lived around us, his name was um, Tony Romero. And he, after high school, he joined the service. And then he came back, he attended church. And he used to sit in the back of the church as the preacher was preaching. And he used to shout, hallelujah, glory mm -hmm. to God. And I used to turn around and say, what's wrong with that guy? Because I'd never heard that before. 
And so the more he attended church and the more I attended church, I really got into what he was saying, but I couldn't understand it. When I was nine years old, the preacher taught a service that day and Tony was shouting and hollering, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. And something just touched me. And all of a sudden the tears started rolling, but I couldn't understand why am I crying? What's wrong with me? And I went down front and I accepted Jesus as my savior. From that time on, I became curious. We would have missionaries that came from Africa that would preach, that would teach at our church. And I was saying, my God, you know, well, what is this? And we began to have Bible school after school on, after school was out, the, the preacher from the church with his children and other children would come and we would have Bible school. They would have flannel boards where they would uh, have the little pictures of Noah's Ark and the, Noah's children and the animals and everything. And after Bible school was over for the six weeks, they would give whoever wanted what they had, they would give it to them. So I thought I could become a preacher, so I would take it. And on, on the days I would line my brothers and sisters up outside with chairs and I would have a cardboard box and that would be my pulpit. I would take the flannel board and the figures and the animals and put them on the board. And then I would really be preaching with my uh, animals and everything. So I would make my, my brothers and sisters listen to me. So after that, I graduated from high school. And when I went to, when I was graduating from high school, the only thing my mother could afford to give me was a $12 Timex watch, but I really cherished that watch. But it hurt my heart because my mother wasn't at my graduation. So I was, I began to get to a low point and I decided that I was gonna make something out of my life. I was gonna be somebody that I could make my mother be proud of me because my mother and I had issues. When my father was gone, my oldest sister would take off and leave home and we wouldn't see her for a while. And one, one day I found a letter on the television and I decided to open the envelope. I opened the envelope and I saw that my mother had written a letter to my sister. And she was talking about how she just couldn't stand to look at me because I reminded her so much of my father. And I said, from that day on, when I get grown and I have children, my children are always going to know how much I love them because I don't want my children to feel what I feel. So before I came to California, I had a friend that had a little boy. And her life ambition was to be a prostitute. This is all that she wanted to be. She wanted to be a prostitute. So she would tell me, oh, I'm gonna go to the store and buy cigarettes. Will you watch my baby for me? So I said, okay. So it first started, she would be going for cigarettes. I wouldn't see her for two days. The two days became weeks. The weeks became a month. And then the little boy got sick and he had the flu and he had to be hospitalized. They took him to the hospital, but they were unable to treat him because his mother wasn't there to give the approval. So because she was on the county, they made me his guardian. So he was treated and they issued a warrant to find her. So I came to California and the county gave me guardianship of him and told me they knew where I was in case they had to find me. So it was about, oh, maybe two years later that I got a letter from the Department of Social Services and they told me that the mother had been found. And she had told them that I had kidnapped her child. And I was really scared because I thought they were gonna believe what she said and I was gonna go to jail. Here at this time, he was two years old and I had this whole burden on my shoulders about going to jail because she said I had kidnapped him. But she was told that she had to get an attorney and fly to California and fight the case because they had an attorney for me. Well, it happens that I was able to 
petitioned for adoption for him because he was made a ward of the court. At the age of 21, I was able to adopt him as a single parent. And at that time, I had met my oldest daughter's father. We were together and he was a good father because he really loved the kids. He had three children of his own, which became my first three stepchildren. On Sundays, we would get in the truck and put a barbecue pit in the back of the truck and we would go to the park with the other families and we would play games and everything. We had a good time. After that, I said, well, I need a better job because now I have more responsibility and I want to do better for my children. Then I had my oldest daughter. So now I have four children. And I went to look for a job and my girlfriend called me and she said, oh, Trailways Bus Company is hiring. Would you like to come and work with me? So I said, sure, but I thought she was playing a joke on me like she always did. So I went down to the bus station. She says, come on, let me take you to the office. So she took me into the office where the terminal manager was and he had me sit down and there was another lady in the office. And he said, if I give you this job, what are your plans for this company? And I was being funny because I was going to the racetrack with my friend after I left there. I had no intentions on getting a job there. I never dreamed that I would. So I looked at him and said, well, I'm going to sit behind that desk where you're sitting and I'm going to run this company. And sure enough, I got the job. I started out as an information clerk, moved up as a ticket agent, from a ticket agent to a supervisor. Then from a supervisor, I became the terminal manager. After becoming the terminal manager, I was made the assistant district manager for the West Coast of California. And after that, I said, well, Lord, you know, I have all these kids and I have a small house. I need a home of my own so that my kids can really enjoy themselves. At the age of 26, God blessed me with a home. I got a four, a four bedroom house, and it was in the part of, of uh, Los Angeles that used to be the old Beverly Hills. And it was one of those huge old Victorian houses. So I lived there for nine years. And after the neighborhood started to get bad, I said, Lord, I need to move my kids out of here because this is not the place to raise them. So he blessed me with a four bedroom, two story home with a pool in the backyard in Carson, California. After living there for about eight years, my husband had gotten another job, got involved with people that were doing drugs and everything, and then we ended up getting a divorce. Things were very hard then, and I was in a state of mind. I didn't know whether I was going or coming. So I wouldn't want my kids to see me cry, so I would sit in my car and I would cry. So one Sunday morning, I was just so downhearted. I just, I thought, Lord, I, you know, I, I can't do this. I can't take this anymore. So I just started walking. I kept walking and I got up by the school where I was walk, working at. And I heard singing coming from the auditorium and I stopped. And something told me, don't stop, keep walking. So I continued to walk, but I took about 10 steps and I stopped again and I turned around and I started to go back to the auditorium. And the voice again said, don't go in there, keep walking, keep walking. You don't need to go in there. So I started to turn around and walk off again, but then the tears were so hard and my mind said, go to the door. I walked to the door, I grabbed the doorknob to open the door to the auditorium and then I walked away again, I got to the steps. I started to leave, but then I turned around again. I went back to the door. This time I opened it. When I opened the door, the pastor was halfway up the aisle of the church and he said, she's the one. And I just really broke down because I couldn't understand what was happening. The only thing that I thought about was what was happening to me. I had $1,200 worth of bills to be paid. My husband had taken all the money out of the bank except for $12.
So I really, I was just really in a panic because I, I was just thinking about being homeless with my kids and no place to live. So I went home that night and the pastor came over with his wife. They came over, they had groceries. They had lunch money for my two girls and my niece that was living with me at the time. And they prayed and they invited us to start coming to Bible study, which we did. And this was my beginning to walk with the Lord. And it was a change. It was when my life started to change. I had a neighbor that lived next door to me that was security at a middle school. And he asked me, he said, um, have you ever worked in a classroom before? He said, we have a, a teacher up here that's leaving because she wants to travel around the world. So I can give you the name to the principal and you go and you talk to her. So he gave me the name of the principal and I went up to the school and I talked to her. And this was on a Monday. On a Thursday, I received a call from the assignment office from uh, LA Unified. So they told me to report to Gardena High School at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. So I got to Gardena High School and I'm waiting because you have to sign in and everything and everybody's talking back and forth. So this one guy was saying, oh, how long have you been waiting uh, to take the test? And I said, huh? He said, uh, I've been on the waiting list for a year waiting to take this test. How long have you been waiting? I said, well, I talked with the principal at a school on Monday and they called me on, on a Thursday and told me to report here on Saturday. He said, well, who do you know? And I looked and I said, oh, maybe I'm talking too much. So I stopped talking. So I, my first assignment was at a special ed school. And I'm saying I went in and I was shocked because I had never seen special children like the ones that was there. And this was a special edge center. Their children were severe. And I had no idea. I wanted to run away because I was scared. Before the end of the day, I fell in love with the children at that school. And I said, then this is what my life is supposed to be. This is where I am supposed to be. So I said, well, I really don't want to be placed in a special ed center. I want to work somewhere where somebody can verbalize with me, somebody can sympathize with me, and I can help somebody. So there was a school that needed a person there. So I went to the school, I interviewed with the principal, and the principal hired me. When I got there, they had the special ed class, but the special ed children weren't allowed to be on the yard with the other children. They <clears throat> didn't have a play area like all the other classes did. They weren't able to go to assemblies because they were special and they were separated from everybody else. So I would take them outside and I would have to stand around and look and round to see if there was an empty space on the yard anywhere to take the children to play. So there was no place on the yard for them to play, so I took them to the grass. We started to play our little handball and kickball. Then pretty soon, the other some of the other kids started coming around. They started mingling with the children, and they discovered, hey, they're no different than us. So the next school term, when we got ready to start school, we of course we had school. We had meetings like three days before school started. So the principal wanted to know if there were any concerns. So I stood up and I said, you know, it's not fair what you do to the kids in special ed. You don't give them a place to play. You don't let them attend assemblies and you exclude them from everything that goes around in school. And that makes them feel like they're not wanted here. So then they started to give treat the kids in special ed the same as them. There were children there that didn't know how to read. They couldn't write. But I decided I'm going to teach these children how to do things. And I made a board and I put numbers on it and I laminated the board and I used it for addition and subtraction. Started teaching. They started learning how to add and subtract. I would dot the alphabet and take their hand and hold their fingers 
and teach them how to trace the letters. So pretty soon they, they were able to write. They were able to sound out their alphabet. Some of them started to write and then we had spelling. Some of them started to learn how to spell. I had one boy that would sit and cry because he didn't even know how to make a sentence. So I would start with one word with him and tell him, okay, today your word is beautiful. We learned how to spell the word beautiful. Then I said, okay, you're gonna make a sentence with three words with the word beautiful. So then he started trying to make a word. And then one day he came in and he says, oh, I learned how to write a sentence. I said, what sentence did you write? And he had, Miss Ward has a beautiful smile. And I said, oh my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as I began to nurture the children more, show them that they were loved, take them around other people and make the other children respect them and talk to them like they talk to each other, things started to really change. Then I started, I was moved to another school and I left all the children that I had really grown up with. My grandchildren, Crystal and Jasmine, were in the same school where I taught and my grandson, Dominic. So they were at the same school. And they were at the school and this little boy liked Jasmine, but he didn't know how to talk to her and he would flirt with her in a way that, you know, he would pick on her and she would be upset. But ja <clears throat> Jasmine, Crystal and Dominic were in a, they were taking taekwondo and they were learning how to break boards with their feet and break them with their hands and they were learning how to do roundhouse kicks and everything so one day I was on my way to the cafeteria and the, these four kids came running to me Miss Ward Miss Ward I said what Jasmine Jasmine I said Jasmine what she just gave, I think the boy's name was Eddie, I don't really remember, that she just gave Eddie a roundhouse kick. Boy, you should have seen it. <laughs> I said, oh, Jazz, didn't I tell you guys you couldn't fight? You could not fight because you're in karate. You'll hurt somebody. You can't do that. Jazz said, well, he was bothering me. Well, that was an experience that you know, God has his way of doing things and he has his way of showing you things. When I would go to the store after I had retired, I would run across adults in the store that would stop and they would stare at me. Aren't you Miss Moore? Didn't you work at Century Park? Yes, I did. Well, don't you remember me? You know, like there was a lot of kids there. I would have to look and I would shake my head. I said, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was such a blessing to know that I had made an impact on somebody's life. I had made an impact on a child's life that didn't have a home line. I had children that would want to go home and stay with me. And I, you know, I'd say, I would love to take you home with me, but, you know, I can't do that. But after that, I decided that I'm going to do, do something and I'm going to be able to help somebody. So I decided then that I needed to get a bigger house. I needed a better job. I needed to be able to teach somebody. And that was after that I had a girl that was being abused by her grandfather. She had a baby. When she went to her grandmother, her grandmother didn't believe her and she put her and the baby out of the house. So she came to my house. So it was a beginning like that, that I started having a lot of kids at my house. And things started happening till one day my niece that was with me had been abused by her mother. My brother worked for the highway department and traveled a lot, so he couldn't take care of her. 
So I had her. So when she got grown, she told me, she said, you know what, Auntie Minnie? She said, I believe that there is a God. She said, I saw how God moved in our life when Richard left. When he took that $12 and you wrote those checks and we didn't have anything cut off, we didn't have to move from our house. I knew it was nobody but God. So we prayed every day before we walked out of that house. We would hold hands and stand in a circle and pray before we walked out of the house. We started going to church and we were in a good church. My, grand, my great grandson was like, four years old and he would stand up in the chair because when we had there was praise and worship started, he loved praise and worship. He would stand up in the chair and he would clap his hands and he would be, be singing. Sometimes I don't know what he was saying, but he did that because he knew how to say hallelujah and praise the Lord. And, and, and it was so mighty. And my grandchildren were getting fed their lives was changing, all of our lives was changing. And then the bishop used to tell us, when I have taught you all that I can teach you, and there's nothing else that I can teach you and you need to move farther, he said, you go where you can get fed farther. And then my daughter Tawana one day told me, she said, mama, I went to this church and this prophet, she testified to me. And I said, for real? She said, yeah. She said, she told me things that was happening in my life that I don't, she didn't even know me. And I don't even understand how she said that. And I said, well, what kind of church is this? So I said to myself, I said, well, I need to go and see if this is really for real because I, I don't know anybody that has done anything like that or I've heard of anybody saying anything like that. So she told me, well, they're having this prophetic class. You want to go with me to that? I said, yeah, I would like to go because I wanted to see what type of church this was. I wanted to see what type of person this prophet was supposed to be and make sure that this was really something from God and not something else. So I went to my first prophetic class, and that day, Mama T touched me, and the spirit fell over me, and I got, I said to myself, this is a woman of God. This is really for real. This is what I want. When I came home from the class that night, and I walked in the door, my husband was sitting in the living room on the couch and he looked at me. He said, oh, my God. He said, you've got this glow on you. You look different. And I told him and I feel different because God had touched me. And that's why I say family is important. A family has to stick together through everything. Your children need to know that they're loved. Your children need to know how to love. And you need to walk in a way that you would leave footsteps behind. Mm -hmm. And you can have somebody walk behind you and see those footsteps. And you need to act in a way and show things to children and other women that will leave impressions on their heart. When you leave an impression on somebody's heart that has been good, it's something that will never be forgotten. Impressions are important. The impact that you have on a life can never be taken for granted. There are circumstances that follow us that we don't even know. And on Friday, Monique had words with the word trust. She made remarks with every letter in trust. 
And in that, she talked about how we sometimes get to say, uh, something told me to do this. Something told me to do that. And I thought about that, that something, and that had been my problem when I thought about, oh, something said do, do this, something said do that, not realizing that that something was the Holy Spirit, that I did not know, I did not realize that it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. But being under Mama T and her teachings, I have learned so much. I have learned how to listen to God speak. I have learned that what God says, he means what he says. When God says he will do something, he will do what he says. I have learned that angels do come to you when you call. I had an experience where I wanted to go and get a breakfast sandwich at the little donut shop by my house. And I didn't want to ask my husband or my son to go get it because, you know, I wanted to be independent and do something for myself. So I took my walker and I started walking to the donut shop. When I got near the mailboxes, I started to really feel bad. And I'm saying, oh, my God, maybe I would need to go back in the house. But I stood there for a minute and trying to regroup myself. And I walked on to the donut shop. I didn't think I was going to make it there, but I made it. So I got in there and I ordered my breakfast sandwich and I sat down on my walker for a minute until it was ready. And I said, Lord, help me to get home. I got to the end of the sidewalk and I was really feeling bad. I thought I was going to pass out. And I said, oh, Lord, I need my angels to help me get home. Then all of a sudden it got so bright, like the sun just really opened up and it was bright. And I looked down at my hands and it was like I had on a had gloves and it was like glitter or I said, is, is this this gold? What is this? Both my hands was like a glove of glitter. And I looked up and I just felt I felt like like air. And before I knew it, I don't even remember walking from the, the donut shop to my house that I was in the house. And I was just shouting and I was just praising God. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, you sent the angels. You sent the angels. So we have to have belief. We have to have trust. And we have to know that when God speaks, when you ask him for something, that he'll do it. He'll do it every time. And I just want to leave with you this word today. Make your footsteps be seen. Let the impression that you put on somebody's heart stay there. And let the words that you speak to people, the way you treat people, always will let you be like that Proverbs 31 one. Proverbs 31 20 says she opens her hand to the poor yes she reaches out her filled hands to the needy whether in body mind or spirit verse 25 strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure she rejoices over the future the latter day or time to come knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it she opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and her charm is the law of kindness, giving counsel and instruction. These words I live with, leave with you, and I hope that you will take them to heart, and I hope that you will do your best to touch somebody today. Leave those footsteps behind that they can follow. Leave that imprint in their heart so that they will know that they are loved and they are careful. God bless you all and thank you. Okay. Amen, Mama Minnie. Amen. 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 Amen.
what a giving heart that God would trust such a young girl to take somebody else's baby in. And isn't it just like the devil, you did something to try to help them out and they turned around and tried to, try to send the police after you. You're like, wait a minute. It just shows you your call to it. And in every opportunity, you took the time with the children just be a voice for them. And you opened up your life for other people to expand other people. And you're steadily learning, you're steadily growing, you're steadily increasing. Such awesome testimonies and stories. I wanna open it up for you guys to ask mama many questions. Go ahead, guys. So good. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Um, me and my aunt are very close and I've been waiting prayerfully to hear her testimony. And, you know, today I was really busy doing some things because we're in the process of moving and I lost my keys three hours ago. And I said, ain't nothing but the devil trying to keep me from this testimony. And my keys were, my phone was locked in my car, but God saw a way that I could be a part of this uh, beautiful mission. So we are grateful and thankful. And Auntie many you have always been a bright light shining and leading us. I mean, I have so much love and respect for you. You are the pillar in our family. And I hope and pray continue to do your mission and your work to be able to lead and advocate for others. And we just love you so much. And I have the boys here listening. She's always given us guidance on parenting and motherhood. And I mean, she's an absolute blessing and not just an aunt, a mother, and also most of all, a mentor. Because she's very real with everything. That's all, no questions, but thank you. Thank you all for listening and this opportunity. Amazing. I love it. Here we go. Um, more questions. Anyone have a question? I just want to. I just want to say. I just love Mama Minnie's boldness when she was going from the different situations. When her friend said, "I have a job over here. Do you want to work?" and she thought she was kidding, but she went in there and told the man, "I was going to have your position." She was I like, she worked her way all the way up. It was just like the favor of God. And then when she didn't have nothing, like super overcomer, and she thought that she might be homeless or, you know, it just gave me, I was just over here like in awe because, man, God is so good. How she went to and got the job and she wasn't even a teacher. And then she changed the policy. She's an activist as well. Just like, she is so awesome. And I just want to tell you, I just love your spirit and your heart. And just to know who you are right now is just like so warming to me. I just love it. And you'll have a long life. I'm just saying. It is good. <laughs> yes. Still impacting. Amen. I liked your boldness too. I was like, I'm gonna have your job. She said, not too long, she was prophesying. <laughs> what other words, what other words, any of you guys? I'd like to say um, a couple of words if it's all right. Hi, Connie, yeah. Hi, yes, I'm sorry, I'm Jim today. I forgot to change, my husband's on with me today <laughs> by name. That's all but right. um, Mama Manny, I've seen you on uh, Prophetess, mm -hmm. Uh, programs before and um, my heart today goes out to you so very much because I have been a teacher of special ed children and um, children who are not special ed but there is such a need for the heart that you have for these children and uh, you are a living example of what those children need um, it's something that goes beyond regular teaching in uh, man's eyes. And I wanna thank you on behalf of those children. Um, they need so much, I feel in addition, uh, although I've taught all kinds of children, but um, I thank you for your heart and the steps that you took in their lives to bring the love of Jesus to them. It's invaluable, even though they may not realize it, uh, they know it and they have felt it. And 
you've been a huge blessing to the children and to so many of us as you've spoken today. So thank you. Thank you, Mama Minnie. God bless you. God bless you richly. Thank you. Thank you, Connie, for speaking up. God bless you. you. <laughs> I, was just, I was so glad you spoke up, Connie. Yeah. Such a I, I have a question too, Mama Minnie. <clears throat> yes. Um, so I loved your story as well. Um, everyone has a story that no one would ever guess. And I love that. That's one of the one things I love about humans is that their story, we all live a movie life pretty much. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And um, it was just, it, it reminded me a lot of, of my mom because she would be taking people in as well like you. And it reminded me of her heart. And I love that too. Um, but one thing I, I wanted to ask is what scriptures, if you have more than one, would you say you were really walking with during that time of, you know, hard times and just kind of, you know, cause it, it takes a lot of strength to hear, hear something inside of your head saying, keep walking, keep walking, but you continue to turn around to the point where you didn't stop until you walked in and your entire life has changed. Um, so what, what scriptures were you feeding yourself to have a strong mind in that sense and just to keep you going through all the, you know, tough times? The one scripture that kept me going was Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah 4710. At the time that I was really going through, I would sit at the bus stop and I would just, I, I, I think I walked around like I was in a daze for like almost a year of my life asking God to bring my husband back, to bring him back home. And, you know, that's all I could see because I couldn't see anything else because of the hurt and the scripture and one day I was at the bus stop waiting on a bus because I'd had to get a bus to get home because he took the car. And there was a voice that said, haven't I told you that I'm with you? Haven't I told you that I will help you? Haven't I told you that I will see you through? And I'm sitting, I'm turning around because just like I'm talking to you, I heard that voice and I'm looking and there's nobody beside me. Wow. But I heard this voice. And that is the scripture that would keep me going. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much, Mama Minnie. You're welcome. That's amazing. Next one, next question, next question, next question. I love this. Um, I just have a comment. Oh, hold on. Let me get over here. Hold on. She's coming. Oh, wait, wait. She, you're, mute, you're muted. Uh, mute, 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 mute. There you go. Can you hear me? Yep, now we can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, I'm so proud of my grandma. I was just sitting here in awe, just so proud of her um, being able to share her story. She was a little nervous at the beginning. So we just had a little prayer war probably 15 minutes before um, we went in and it was so awesome. And um, she just does not even know the impact that she has had in my life, like my siblings life, my cousins, we come from a really big family. And like, I'm telling you, like her covering and prayer has really kept us. Like, I just don't understand some of the things that have happened in this family or to this family, how like God saw us through and it was nothing but this woman, like she has led all of us to God. And like, we still got some family members that we working on, but like, um, she's just an amazing woman and I just love her and I'm proud of her. And um, I'm just grateful that she's my grandmother. So I just wanted to share that. Yes, grandma, I love you so much. Can I say something too? Yes. Okay, and I also have um, Shay Shay here too. She wanna to say something. I okay. Wait, wait, we can't. Wait, 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 wait. Where's she at? I can barely hear her. Where's she at? I can't see her. Hold, hold on, Mama. Let me take it off the speaker. The. Could you hear us better now? Yes, we can't see you, but we can. But hear we can't you. see you. Okay, but you can't see us. 
We're not presentable, but let's speak. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I'm so proud of you, Auntie Minnie. Um, I'm I'm actually really proud that you got on here. It's so like so brave of you, and I'm just happy that everyone was able to hear you. And <laughs> and I'm just sorry. Excuse me. I'm I don't get all tongue tied, but I'm just so happy that um. I mean, that she was able to get on here. And like, you know, I said that we love you. You have helped keep our family together and you like keep us all together. And we're so happy, like, you know, to have you, of course. I love you, auntie. Okay. And I just know, um, sorry, Shay. And I just know all, um, how nervous she was and how Chunky was helping her out. So it's just so big of, um, to see her speak. And then just also just me and Shay were just talking about just how this family receives her. And like, we know she has like grandkids and she has a family, but we get busy. And so it's just like, I feel like every time she gets on and the love, the honor and the reverence that the ministry shows her, I just know that that warms her heart. So that just makes us feel really good. And then also just how she keeps the family together, keeps us prayed up. Like when something's going on, like we call her, even though like Chunky is kind of transitioning into, into you know, the many of this generation, because we call her, but it just, it really just makes us feel so, just so happy um, to see her being received that way by the ministry. So I just wanted to say that. Absolutely. We love her. We need her. <laughs> That's my grandma now. Oh, I love it. Yes, Candy, she'll take you, you know, if you're already in. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's on mute. She was talking. I could hear Jazzy had you on mute for a second. Anyone else? I have a question. Go ahead. Mama Minnie, thank you so much for coming on and telling us your story. And I just honor you so much. And I actually just have a question about like, um, just because I've dealt with these things and I just want to mm -hmm. know like your, your opinion and how you posture your heart. Like when you took in other people's kids, and other people were bashing you for it and your heart was still so pure for it. Like what kept you still like, I know that this is what I need to do. This is where they're supposed to be. What kept me was these were children that needed love. They didn't have love that they could get anywhere else. And I knew what it was like not to have love in your life. And I just wanted to give my love and I wanted to share my love. And that's, that was what was going with us. And, it, and I, I think that just because of the radiation of the love all around was, um, it just made it so easy. It wasn't uh, anything. It was because it was really something that I wanted to do. I wanted to take that pain that they had and I wanted to give them joy. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. That just like really helped me a lot. Um, when I was like first out of high school, I took in a friend's baby and like she's like once again in a bad situation. And even just recently, like within like less than a year, like I've taken somebody else's child and like it was one of those things where they're like, well, why are you doing that? Like, you know, and I'm like, I felt like my heart was postured in the right position. And then it really got me whenever you had said that, like, even though people were so ugly to you and didn't understand, but you were so still, you still reverenced and respected them and honored who they were in God's eyes. Like that just touched me so much and did so much for me. Thank you. You're welcome. You just keep trusting God and knowing that you loving somebody else, you're helping that child. So just always remember that the love that you give, the love will be returned. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh. I just asked, it's so funny. I just asked Monique, I said, I was like, did I, uh, I said, I said, what did I say, Mo? I asked her, I said, oh, I said, do I always take in other people's kids? She was like, what did you say? Always. She said, she said, I don't think I've ever had you to myself. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, they need a mama. And you know, I want to say this. It's going to help somebody. You know, my mother wasn't able to be like the loving, hugging, touching, kissing. I could go have a talk with her and she could give me an answer. I didn't, wasn't raised with that. 
so God had to send me like a mama Minnie, a mama Selena, a mama Dorothy. I've had like four mamas that just like became exactly what my mother needed. And some of you are like, but I want this relationship, but I want this relationship with my mother. You may never have that relationship you want with your mother. And I, God showed me like an example of my iPhone. And, and he said, on my iPhone, he said, if you don't download the app, is it, can you use it? I said, no, he goes, your mother doesn't have the download. So why would I be angry at her when she doesn't have the download? That grace wasn't on her for that. I could pray and pray and beg, but I was gonna be in a wounded state. So I had to stop expecting something from my mother and be like, and God sent me a godmother. He sent me a mother in the Lord that was able to teach me. Um, my ex-husband's mother is like, I go see her every time I go into Oregon, uh, Oregon, every time. She taught me so much stuff. She pulled me aside, it was almost embarrassing. Like, look here, little girl, this is not the way we do. <laughs> you are a woman and you cannot do this. You need to, and I used to be like, oh, I didn't know. And if you, someone doesn't teach you, you don't know. And if they're mentally unstable or there's a problem or they were molested or they haven't dealt with their issues, how can they give you something you don't have? They can't, they don't have to give. They gotta have love to give love. You know, I've seen more of my, my mom has told me she loved me more times this year than in my entire life. When he, she did a lot of restoration, my mother has been able to call and check on me and do things more, but I'm just grateful for it now because I had to part with the fact that she could not. And so when you're hurt and wounded, my family doesn't support me. It's okay, because God is your support. When you're hurt and wounded, if they left you and it's a man, then thank you for the time you gave me. Uh, the Lord is my provider and I shall not want. And the Lord is good to me and he has a perfect plan for me anyway. Thank you for your time. Thank you for these kids. Whatever you gave me in the process, my thank you for the lesson even. I thank the Lord for that and keep on moving. And I had to realize not to put on people what they just don't have. Now there's some people can grow into things, but there's some people that will never ever. So I stopped putting those type of expectations on them. And I had to get healed from my mommy hurts. You know, the things your mom said to you uh, when, like she said, you know I me, mean? people are walking around when they're the, the mom's boyfriend or the husband was molested them. The mother stayed with them or made you go marry the deacon that, that raped you for the sake of, or didn't believe you and called you a liar, and that pain is inside of you? No. Or you told them somebody did something and they start calling you fast and calling you names. Like it was your fault. Instead of being a protector, they went into accusing and putting it on you. And you're weighing and you're carrying that. Or they gave you up and you don't know why, but that doesn't matter because you were still called to be here. You were chosen, you were called, you're not rejected, you're accepted, you're in the body of Christ. God needed to get you here and they were just a conduit to get you here. God wants to heal you of that today. I, I'm gonna pray a prayer for you guys. I wanna say something. And this is for every person with a mommy wound. I'm gonna say something to you and I need you to do this. For a second, I am that, that mother that rejected you, didn't protect you, that had, that had the mental instability, that had, had the issue, um, the one that, that blamed you, the one that called you names, the one that cursed you out of their mouth, the one that didn't, didn't, wasn't there to hug you, couldn't give you sound advice. When you needed help, they turned their back on you. The one that just is not able to be there. For a second, I'm taking something from you. I just want to say this, I am right now mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to see your greatness. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to protect you. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to, to listen to you or guide you and steer you in the right direction. I have my own issues, my own problems. It was easier for me to blame you rather than help you heal. I'm sorry that I wasn't at your games. I didn't encourage you. I'm sorry I didn't invest in you and I paid more attention to other things and I made work and men and such circumstances and your father and I blamed you for everything. Forgive me. I hadn't known the love of God. I wasn't able to and you deserved better. You deserved more. You deserved 
goodness. You deserve the hug. You deserved the 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 talk to. You deserved the, the you deserved me to be there for you. You deserved me when you were crying to come and put my arms around you. You deserve me to listen to your pain and let you know that there's going to be okay. And that don't worry, I got you. Don't worry, you're beautiful. Don't worry to encourage you. I'm sorry I didn't encourage you in your pain. Shut up. I'm sorry that I talked about you. I'm sorry that I lied on you. I'm sorry I didn't protect you. But the Lord has remembered you today. And I'm not going to let you down. I'm not leaving you. I'm not forsaking you. It is well. And the Lord has a perfect plan to prosper you and not to harm you. That pain that's in your heart right now, for me, I'm asking you to forgive me. And every person that needs to forgive their mom and that touched you in your spirit, I don't care if it's my own children, I need you to say it to forgive me and just type it or say, I forgive you. Come off mute and just say, I forgive you. If they're, that's I forgive you, mama. I forgive you. 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 I speak healing and I pull out all that pain. I pull up all the memories. I pull up all the wounds of it in the name of Jesus. And let the fire of God touch you in the name of Jesus. You are wanted, Hababahande KK. You are mine, Hababashede Yamaha. I brought you a purpose for a price, Hababashende K. I paid a price for you. I have purpose for you. You are mine and you are beautiful, Hababase. I saw your tears. I bore your pain. I bore it on my body so that you could be free, Hababashi. And I release. Freedom to you right now. Supernaturally, freedom to you right now. Wholeness to you right now. I saw right now a piece to a puzzle. And I saw that one piece that was missing in your life literally float down and go right into the spot. Hey! God said you're going to be whole where you haven't been able to be whole. God said you're going to love where you weren't able to love. God said, you're going to be able to function like you weren't able to function. Hey, yeah, Mama Hande. You're going to be secure. When somebody even comes to talk to you negative, you don't even have a reaction because you are brand new. He said, behold, I do a new thing with you. Ha, shedi di amaha. Se keke ama Mama Hande ke. So shedi di abaha. Ka, 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 ba, da, se di di amaha. Ke, ke, ke. The angel of the Lord visit you. The angel of the Lord visit you. The angel of the Lord visit you. Ha, shada, ba, ka, shedi di abaka. In the mighty name of Koshiri Yama, Handa Baba Kadabaku, He said to the Abaka, Kam Baba Handeke, in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you even felt something in your body. You felt something on the inside of you. You felt it. God is there to let you know. Even when you go to sleep, you're going to know you've been heard. You're going to know you're different. You're going to know you received it. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, your God, visits you today. The Lord, you guys did something. You touched his heart today. You have reached heaven, and he has come down to see about you to deliver you today. Okay. Mm. I'm looking at something. I see a reunion. I don't know if this is a father which I released that in Jesus' name that you've never met before, uh, even with a mother, some type of reunion. And, you know, when I was uh, 18 years old, I had a guy that I was, I was with, and I, I found his mother, and they have had a relationship their whole life. My ex-boyfriend, I talked to him last week, his, he was adopted, and he found his mother. And I see some reunions that God is going to bring some ease. And even my son, 
Derek has met his father since. And Emanuela's father didn't call in 13 years. And we prayed and her father called the next day. I am here to tell you, I see some reunions, not of pain, but of some reunions of joy. I see some reunions where you're able to put the peace back in. I see some reunions of love and I see some non-expectations being there. It's just the fact that God did it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's perfect in his sight. And the God is putting your life back together in the mighty name of Jesus. It is done. It is spoken in heaven. It's already worked out and your puzzle is back to where it's supposed to be. You are whole. You are sound. You are beautiful. You are perfect. I don't care if your mom and dad hooked up for a one-nighter in the backseat of a car and after a bar session, you are called, you are chose, chosen by the Lord. Before he formed you in the womb, he knew you and he set you apart. As a, he set you apart to be here for such a time as this. You are chosen and the Lord will not take it back. So be healed, be whole, be set free be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak this over your life. I speak wholeness and healing and love to find you today in the name of Jesus. Every person under the sound of my voice, the Lord your God loves and has visited you today in Jesus name. And all of those who receive this prayer, I want you guys to say amen. 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 Did anybody have any testimonial moments at that moment when we were praying? Did anybody have something happen? Anybody want to say? They I just felt the power of God, Mama. I just it just came over me fully. Glory to God. You are healed. He's touched you. I felt released. I did, Mama. Yes. Mine was like, <clears throat> it was more so of like a piece. Like my mom has been dead for like four years. And although like God mended the relationship before she died, I still think it was bits and pieces of things that I was still holding on to. Yes. So yes. I just released that. I felt the weight. Like mm -hmm. I can let it go. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and the Lord wanted me to share something with you guys. You know, if my mom hadn't have been that distant of a mother, my children, like I, I wanted, I wanted Tara Monique and AJ and, and um, Tierra Nicole never to feel a day where they weren't loved. So I did things that most parents probably would not do to make sure that they know that they are loved you know, to make sure that they know they can come talk to their mother. But if my mom had been that, I probably would have took it for granted. I probably wouldn't even have have, have been been a good mom. And you know, when those people that have the good moms, they're like, oh, shut up mom. And, and they talk crazy to their parents. But then to me that they didn't have that love from a mom, like I want to be there for my mom, my daughters and I, my sons. I want to be understanding. I want them to be committed. I want them to be, I want them to know I'm committed to them. I want them to know I hear them. Even when I'm wrong, after I've corrected them, I want to be able to space them where they can come to. So I want you to, I said that all the time to say is that whatever you didn't get you will get thank you baby thank you you will have give me a kiss whatever you didn't get you will get whatever you didn't have you will have why because you're going to give it to your children whatever you need god has it and it's in you so when you begin to be that mother that from the disconnected mother, you're a connected mother. From the mother that could not, who didn't get your hair done, your hair, your kid's hair gonna be slayed. <laughs> you know, taking care of the little boy's gonna have his little haircuts, you know, whatever happened. And, and I'm releasing parents that whose kids may be wound up in jail or, you know, my friend, his son committed suicide the other day. And I hate to prophesy right things when it's a bad thing, especially, but it just is the nature of a prophet when Ivanka just told me, and his son used to always watch my, um, he used to always watch my, my videos. And his dad used to say, oh my God, my son watches your videos all the time. It was his father's only son. And he came out the house one day, just came home from a six week boot camp. He was 18 years old. He walked out after uh, the dog ran across the street and he ran out after him and a, you know, I had hit his son. And 
he's had a long road since then for the last five years because his life didn't go the way he wanted it to go. And, you know, the way he had planned. And um, he was in the hospital for so long. We prayed him through and his son came out saying how much he loved my videos and he used to watch my videos and he contacted me several times. And I just loved it. I thought it was amazing. And when she said his son passed the other day, I was like, oh no, he committed suicide. She's like, why would you say that? I was like, I don't know. It was the first thing that came out of my mouth. And I knew he committed suicide. And, and you know, those parents need to know it's not their fault. I don't know if you guys know, but um, Desiree's son committed suicide. You don't know your sisters until you get to know your sisters on this line. That's a heavy pain for a parent to carry. And it's a lot of guilt for the parent to carry. And you have to love on your sisters. You know, I can't imagine what it was like when, when Emily was holding her baby for an hour and her baby died in her arms after carrying him for nine months. I don't even know. I seen the baby's picture the other day and I'm just like, oh my goodness. You know, uh, my heart just goes out to you mothers who have lost children. And I'm going to relieve the pain. There's pain from you of guilt, heaviness and condemnation. But I know he is a restorer of many things. He brings joy where there's been mourning. He brings <laughs> beauty where there's been ashes and that you're carrying a story inside of you and you will set many free in the areas where you've hurt. So Desiree, we love you so much. I know your baby just had a birthday. It would have been his birthday. And, um, you know, I, I love how God has grown you up so much this year and healed so many things there and, um, you know, and done so much in your family. Emily, thank you for always sharing your story and, and helping, encouraging people and um, having such a heart for truth, you know, and any other mom here that might have missed it or your child, child ended up in jail or you, they ended up doing something that you didn't deem as worthy, you're like, and you're feeling guilty. I just removed guilt, condemnation, pain and hurt today from every one of you in Jesus' name. I break the chain, do you see that is? That has bound you, I bind it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. God is healing today. He is definitely restoring today. And today is a mighty day. We had our first leader of great leadership class and now he's come to visit you guys and do such a mighty thing. Get to know your sisters and learn of their stories. I didn't even know. I learned so much from Mama Minnie today. I was like, I'm bringing Lazarus over for some tutoring. <laughs> you can work with him on his reading. <laughs> I was just sitting there. I was like, I was praying for somebody. And the person for Isaac came this week. And then there's my person for Lazarus. I was like, I'm bringing him over so he can work on his writing skills and his reading with Mama, Min Mama Minnie. I was like, there, back in, back in business. <laughs> the answers. And I literally was praying. We just got the answer for Isaac the other day. Amen. So I want you guys to grab your offering because what are we offering up? We are making an altar right now where we've crossed over today that we are going to carry on the legacy of love of Jesus. We are going to carry on the legacy of wholeness that God has given us today. And so I'm going to ask you, it's going to be strange, but this make this a sacrificial seat because this is not a normal moment. We had a moment where the where God came down. Like I don't know if you guys understood, but there's time where I can pray in times to be like, "Hana mama momonea, hana kitty." I wasn't there. I was in the spirit of God, and God visited you guys because He said today, like literally, I heard the Lord say because many of you sacrificed since one o'clock today, and others of you changed your heart posture. Many other ones had repentance, and He said, "So I visited you." So today, I want you to mark today, October eighteenth that literally you birthed something new, that you are going to be wonderful, uh, spiritual parents and natural parents. The babies that shall come from your guys' wounds, in the next two or three years, I don't know what we're gonna do because there's gonna be so many babies and marriages. I don't know, we have to have a daycare because it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of them. Watch, in the, next, in the next five years, 
in three to five years, there's going to be a bunch of marriages and there's going to be a bunch of babies and a bunch of grandbabies. And you guys, I'm going to be like all over the place chasing these little kids laughing and sending them right back to the parents. I will spoil and I will buy stuff and, and I'll be like, yes, I have been there. I have done that. But I see it. And you guys will be birthing spiritual parents, be spiritual parents. You guys will be fostering them and loving them. And they'll, you'll see yourself in them wounded, broken. And you're going to say, let me tell you what Mama T did for me. In the same way I've been taking them in. And, and if you talked to Brian the other day, I've had to be a mom to Brian. Like literally last three, four days, I, he's my son. He's been here. He's been my son. And I, and, and I'm, I'm messaging him. What's your plan for today? And he gave me his plan. Okay. Nope. You missed this. Okay. You know anybody? Yes, Desiree. She drives, she's a, she's an hour and a half away, but you may have to go get that. He's doing everything. But when he was got first, he was stuck. And then he moved immediately because he felt covered and he needed some things. And he's like, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. I never had this before. You would think you had it before, but you never had it before. God is getting ready to teach you things you never had before. He's about to show you things you never knew before. He's about to restore you in a way where you are not just awesome, you are excellent, you are mighty, you are whole, you are whole whole woman, but you have a lot to give. You are connected to God. You are powerful. You are anointed. And I love it because some of you would just decided today. I really, they, they've been calling me mama, but they said, I need mama. You saw your real need. Like, you think, oh, she's anal. No, she's walking in excellence. It's the difference between anal and excellence. You know, I, he talked about the bed. You know, anybody knows me. I remember one time Skylar came in there. Where's Skylar? I'm about to bust her out. She was like, she was like, oh, I made your bed, Mama, Mama T. And I was like this. I looked, I said, <clears throat> I said, um, Bree, can you come make my bed, please? <laughs> and Skylar was like, it took Skylar one time. She was like, all it took was one time, Mama. I got this next time. She, I want it crisp. And I need, you need it like this. I was like, yes, yeah, just make my bed crisp and put the pillows up perfectly. I don't want them laid back. And I needed to look nice and neat. And Skylar was laughing. She was like, that was the only time I have done with that. And I was laughing because it's the little things that mean a lot paying attention to detail. Your prophetic is taking forth because you understand detail. You understand timing. You understand being on time. That's why my whole team knows I start on time. You guys, I ran back there, threw on my dress. You were just saw me a few minutes ago. She was putting on my makeup and everything. I sat down do, 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 because I have a commitment and a dedication to you guys. Regardless of what I was doing, I'm dedicated to you. If I get up at four in the morning, I, I, I went to sleep at four, I only slept an hour and a half, I'm still dedicated to you. You're learning with dedication, commitment, drive, passion, to do more and over and beyond, to think of the other person's need, to enforce what, what holiness is, to enforce and give gifts and begin to deposit things in people. And so some of you are just realizing, dang, I really need a mama because the other relationship I had wasn't giving me everything I needed. She did as best as she could. Thank you for what you did. Now, phase two mama. Get what you're supposed to get. Pull what you're supposed to pull. Build what you're supposed to build. Find out what you need to find out. But I'm carrying so many things for you guys. So I want you to get your offering. And I don't want, I, I, I don't even want to tell you this. I want you to make it, ask God, it's going to be a sacrificial offering because we're building an altar. When you build an altar, this is a monumental place where you can remember and come back and say today, God, remember what you did today. Remember when you feel like you're less than or you feel like you're having a moment, you go back and say, remember today, October 18th, we built an altar today and I am a whole woman and I'm a whole man and I'm sound today because I'm building this altar, Father, where you visited me. You came down and visited me and you told me that you would do a new thing. You told me you put the pieces back together. You told me that I'm whole. You can come back to the altar any time and he will make that altar memorial rise up and his power will move because you came back to this altar. Altar. So I want you to go sow your offering and come back and I'm going to pray for you that I'm going to release you. So go ahead. You can turn it up, honey buns. Turn this one up. There we go. Baby, I worship the God of What you say, what you say, Lord? What you say is 
What you say, what you say, what you say, Lord. What you say is done. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Just the You are my beloved. Right now, right now, right now. In right whom I'm right well right pleased. Healing, healing. When I look at you, I love what I see. And you don't have to strive for what I already died for. And you don't have to pay for what's already yours Cause you have my favor my face is turned toward you you have my attention you're the one that i choose oh, 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 oh. One that I choose, and even in a crowd of people, I still focus on you. Cause you don't have to stay for what you're already made for, and you don't have to plead with me for what I gave you freely. Cause you have my my face is turned toward you. You have my attention. You're the one that I choose. The lies of the cat destroyed by the truth. crazy because by discernment um before Desiree caught them I already caught them I knew it. I just told myself don't let them in don't let them in don't let them in I knew exactly what that was that the enemy was angry and he sent like 10 people in to try to bring sexual content and try to do things right now like 10 of them and so they come in like a band of raiders and so I always can catch them when their names are always 
there, see, like, there goes another one right there. See it? You have to catch their names and you know what they are. You know who they are. So they were trying to come in because we just had a monumental moment and the enemy wanted to destroy things. So the discernment right there was so great. I was able to know. I was like, don't let those ones in. I just told her, I was like, don't. But she thought she got them all. I was like, no, there's one more in here. <laughs> and so I caught them right before because the, they because God had already moved, you guys. He was already moving by his spirit. It just sent to disrupt. So like when their names are a bunch of foreign names and they're all coming in at once, like five or six of them at once, they've joined together. They decided we're gonna go tear up this person's Zoom and now they try to come in. I do not accept those. So at the end, especially we're almost done, I already knew it was not. So I knew immediately that's about the fifth time I've been able to discern when someone's coming in, it's not the Lord. May you guys have that same discernment where when something is not God, you'll be able to see that you wouldn't accept it in your life where you have to put it out when you guys can walk in wholeness and you can wait on God so you can know that it's the right thing, that God will be able to let you to see when to open a door and when to keep a door shut, that you would have the power and anointing to remove every obstacle out of your life from this second forth. You would know what it is moving your power and your authority in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is the, the gift of, of discernment. God, you discern things, discerning of spirits. That spirit is not the spirit of God trying to come in. That spirit is not of the Lord. And you have to know, nope, I don't feel right about that one. And if you see more than one, you just know. But you can see them in the natural. You can see people, you know, God will give you a discerning of spirits of where you know it's an evil spirit or it's a good spirit. It's one of the gifts of the spirit. And we know the first Corinthians 14, one tells us that we can eagerly desire the best of God's gift, especially to prophesy. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I just thank God for each and every person that's been here today. Uh, I'm super excited about what God has done here. Uh, this is so mighty because I didn't expect all that. Uh, so much wholeness and healing. Um, I mean, like I didn't expect uh, the turn right there where the Lord just, just changed a shift at that moment, but I should because that's what he does. He cares about his people. And when enough people come on one accord, he will begin to deliver and set free and heal in Jesus name. So I love you guys greatly. I'm going to be praying over, over you guys, uh, this evening to, uh, this week, really look at fasting on Wednesday, even if it's till four o'clock fast till four o'clock, just liquids begin to seek the Lord and just talk to the Lord about what, about your relationship with him, intimacy with him, and let him show you how you can come in deeper. Uh, I'm excited about next week. We will have, uh, mama Sherelle, Brian, she's going to be on and she also goes to RCJC uh, and she's going to be talking. She's an educator. She's an awesome woman of God too. And we thank the Lord for each woman that we've been able to have on. We're still, I'm going to see what, if Mama Maggie, what day she's going to be able to come. But when she comes, but trust me, you will be pressed to get into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, please, if you have not, get your, even if you're going to do on Zoom, get your tickets because tomorrow the tickets will go up. For encounter so get your tickets and then um they're going to go up now it, it's the early registration price right now and so then you guys we have our um prophetic school next weekend friday and saturday this weekend excuse me this weekend friday and saturday prophetic class so you want to register for prophetic class all those who are local can come on wednesday and thursday i'm speaking on thursday night across tv but wednesday i will be hosting okay so i'm excited about what god is doing if you need a one-on-one -on -one, you need personal that's is available too and make sure you order your prayer shawl and your uh your your um your oil online as well we love you. We love you. We love you. We thank God for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and be blessed. Today was a great day. And I'm believing God for uh, dreams. And I'm believing him for visions. I'm believing him so, for so much for your life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless. Love, love you, Mama. Love you, Mama. Love you, Mama. Love you, love you, Mama T and Mama I did Minnie. I did y'all. <laughs> Hi. Praise God, blessings come down my city. Yes. 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 Hi there. Blessings come Hi, candy girl. Hey, oh, mama. Hey, hey, Tish. Hey, Tish. Hey, Becky. Hi, Hi Mama. Zaya, LaShawn, Shay. Hi, Mama. Oh, you guys, Joanna. Uh, Prophet of Shondell, Elizabeth, Terry Marie. Glory to God, Sky Sky, Mahogany, so many Gigi, Mel, T, 
Tish Tish. We love you, love you. Yes. Thank you, God. Praise your high. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Love you. God in the beginning. That's John, the first chapter. When you go to the ninth verse and the third verse, they tell you two things. All created by him. All things were created by him. All things were created by him, with him, and nothing was created that was not created by him. What? He created the heavens and the earth. He's the one that's speaking, let there be light. When it says Elohim, in the beginning, God created. That word Elohim is God created. They're talking about the same 
person. He is God. Now, when you look in the ninth verse of John, the first chapter, the Bible says, the true light, which enlightens everyone. The 10th verse says, he was in the world and the world was created by him, but the world did not recognize him. If that's not enough, go to the word of God and see who is this Jesus. Why everything must obey him? Because he created everything, because he holds everything together, because he is the way, the truth, the life, and our Lord. Read in Colossians, the first chapter. It tells you in the 13th verse, but matter of fact, let's just skip to 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And by him, all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible, invisible, whether they are thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers, all things were created by him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the, he is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that in all things he would have preeminence. He is God. Now, many people get confused because they say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, they are one that they may be one as we are one. In John the 17th chapter and 11th verse, he tells us that the name Jesus is an earthly name. It was left here for us that we could have protection. He said in John the 17th chapter and the 11th verse, verse protect them by that name, the name that you gave me. He gave the name for us as an earthly name of protection. Right now in, the, in heaven, he is revealed not as Jesus, but he is the Lamb of God. He is Elohim. He is. Now watch this. It was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. He said in the ninth verse, For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Father. Hallelujah. And the Prince of Peace. Now, who is he to us? He is our master. He is our Lord. He is our savior. He is God. He is amazing. And do you know what he does? Everything. Greater works shall we do because he went to the Father. He is the reincarnated. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the resurrected life now. He is the glorified risen. He is amazing. He is powerful. He holds all things together. Oh my goodness. He came in a physical being so we could know what it was like to walk on earth just as he walked on earth. He had to be able to relate with us as human beings. He's so God, so good as God that he emptied himself of all deity so he could relate to you. He knows about your weaknesses. He knows about your sicknesses. He knows about your sorrow. He knows what it's like to be ridiculed and talked about and beaten. And yet he carried his cross and he went to the cross. He wouldn't accept anything that would take away from the pain which you carried. He had to carry it. And it is written, hallelujah, that he gave up his life for you and me. So this is Jesus. This is God. This is when you say in the name of Jesus, you go with the power and the authority and all the power that was given to him has now been given to you. So now worship your God, your master, your Lord and your savior, for he is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father except through the son. God bless you guys. Love you. Talk to you in the morning. Yay.